What is up? What is going on, folks? And welcome into another episode of America's Hometown Horror. My name is Mike, and I am your host. And, of course, I am always joined by my co-hosts, who are sitting here alongside me, chewing on Werther's Originals and Ginger Chews, like a bunch of old weirdos. What's up, Kat? What's up, Andrew? Not much. What's up with you? Not too much. How's your Werther's Original? It's actually really, it's better than that Ginger Chew. Yeah, are you 80 80 years old also? (laughs) No. (laughs) Peanut butter brittle. Who doesn't like a Werther's Original? (laughs) Uh, People below the age of 70. (laughs) I mean, they are good, though. I like them. They're tasty. I'm like, okay, all right. You guys like them. But I would never buy them. Yeah, I don't know why they're in our home in a candy bowl on the counter. I think I was going to make some sort of Christmas thing with them. Do you got any rum barrels? Or no, uh, root beer barrels? Oh my barrels. god, root beer barrels, I'll no. I'll take a rum barrel. No. <laughs> they should make those. How about some, uh, Sugar-free, s- some whatever hard candy. Some or some, uh, what do you, uh, <laughs> what do you, oh my god, what do you call, uh, what, were the, what are those, like the, oh, the Necco wafers? Necco wafers. Oh, the worst. I hate Necco wafers. Terrible candy. Sorry, I mean, hey. I think those are made right in Massachusetts. They are. New, you know what Necco stands for? New England Candy, candy Company. Company. Yeah. That is correct. Do you know the white ones? If you snap them in the dark, they spark. Because you should eat that. Get out of here. They do. No, they do. If you go get a pack of them and you get a white one and you go in a closet or something in the dark and you snap it, it sparks. Do you have to go in a closet? Can you just turn off the lights? You can turn off the light. I'm just saying it has to be very dark. So I might actually buy them if I see them. And if this does not spark in the dark, I'm going to be so upset spark with Spark in the dark. Spark in the dark. <laughs> in the dark. Good Neko wafer and we're this original time. <laughs> Uh, but the real reason we're here tonight is we're here to uh, close out found footage February, as it is uh, it's still February as of this recording and as of the time that this episode will be posted. So we made it just at the uh, this is the finish line here. We're going to close out found footage February with As Above, So Below, which was a cat suggestion, I believe. Mm-hmm. You are a big, big time fan of this movie. I, did, I liked it. I remember yeah. when it came out. I remember mm. liking it when I... Watched it good. for the first time, and it's, yeah, it's a good movie. Good. Well, we will get to that in just a few short moments here. But first and foremost, uh, Andrew, happy The Batman Week. Yeah, the week of The Batman. Oh, boy. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, obviously a big week for uh, movie going. I'm sure there's going to be millions and millions and millions upon millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to be made on the back of The Batman. So should be a good couple of weeks. I would say probably a good month for Warner Brothers. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Um, as of this recording, it's Monday, February 28th. Uh, first showings will be out on Wednesday, but uh, available to more wide, uh, to, excuse me, available to wider audiences on Thursday. Uh, we will be seeing that at some point this week, just unclear as to when we will be seeing it. Uh, but I know Andrew and I were talking about this before the uh, review embargo was lifted today, and apparently it is uh, it is quite the movie, with some people calling it uh, possibly the best Batman movie ever made. Or at least the best Batman movie made since The Dark Knight. Um, so obviously tough, tough to live up to The Dark Knight. But we we shall see. I'm very intrigued and excited by this movie. So not quite horror. I don't know if we can get away with. Uh, we could maybe talk about it for like 15 well, minutes on yeah. the uh, podcast. We'll yeah. talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk about it. It's it's worthy worthy of talking about, um, and not necessarily dedicating an entire episode to. Another movie that uh, is worth talking about briefly here. But I would say probably not worth dedicating an entire episode to, uh, since I know Andrew and I had a chance to both watch this movie. Is the uh, the legacy sequel, whatever you want to call it, requel to uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is just called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Andrew, I know that you have some thoughts on this movie. What were your thoughts? Nothing special. It was uh, fine. It was boring, kind of. I still haven't watched it. It was. Very gory. Oh, uh, yeah. There were some very, great very deaths in yeah. the movie. So. Wait, you watched it? I did. Oh, what about me? I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> you can still watch it. I'd it's not like we're, you're not no, allowed to watch it now. Don't, yeah. don't talk too much about it. I, w- I still want to watch I'm it. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I was disappointed. It, it was it was fine. It wasn't horrible. Um, but it wasn't great. And I, I think that they... This, this is what you get sometimes when you... In the age that we live in, which is just all these legacy sequels requels, whatever you want to call them. And they just they keep on coming. I mean we talked about Scream a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was meh to me. I know Kat was a big fan of it. Um, this movie is meh. Yeah. It meh. was I they I never would have needed to watch this movie. Yeah. And I would have been perfectly fine living my life. I just think that it's it's just uh, it also is just Different time. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was made in 1972, I think, or was released in 1972. And this movie is is just 
the absolute opposite of what that movie is, where Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you'd think it's called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that it's a gory film. And there is almost no explicit gore in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's all implied. You don't really see a whole lot. And this movie is the opposite of that. I mean, the one good thing that I will say about it is that every fucking character in the entire movie is as annoying as possible. Like, I feel like that's the objective, is to make these people as annoying as humanly possible. Oh, yeah, within, like, five minutes of watching this, I was like, I hope you I hope all, they all die. die. And, you know, I, I mean, it's not really a spoiler. Most of them do. So, uh, in, in incredibly gory and graphic ways. But it is uh, incredibly popular. I think it was the number two uh, trending or number two ranked thing on Netflix for the better part of the last two weeks since it's been out, so people are watching it. Um, what did you think about the look of Leatherface, of old man Leatherface? I thought it was good. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I thought it was good. I, I, I thought I the design was, was, was good. Yeah, pretty, pretty I cool. liked it. Pretty cool. So I, I just think this, the plot was stupid. In it general. is. It it's is. The plot is definitely movie. dumb, but worth your time. So you should definitely still watch it. I want to. I would. Uh, I'd poke my head in and watch it with you probably okay. again for a good time. Yeah. So good to know. All right. With that being said, any other news items? Anything else? Oh, actually, I have one more thing. But did anybody watch anything good other than Texas Chainsaw Massacre over the last it's week or so last since we recorded? Thing I watched was that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did see this just, I, I saw it got uh, dropped a couple of minutes ago that they are, again, more legacy sequel talk. Uh, they, you guys fans of Beetlejuice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Beetlejuice. Okay. Did you ever hear about the unmade Beetlejuice sequel? No. Uh, that was called Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. That was the name of the, <laughs> no. uh, the sequel where it's just Beetlejuice in Hawaii. Hmm. Um, apparently they are talking about potentially doing that now. Wow. All these years later. Interesting. With uh, Michael Keaton obviously going through a career renaissance, I'd say, of sorts. Uh, interested in returning to the role of Beetlejuice. Also, Winona Ryder, who uh, is looking to reprise her role as well. Cool. I mean, I'd watch a Beetlejuice sequel. Absolutely. Oh, they yeah. should have made that movie years ago. I don't know why they didn't. Yeah. They did yeah. the cartoon series, but they should absolutely do that The cartoon sequel. series was pretty good. The cartoon series was actually pretty good. So, yeah. I mean, I can't believe they didn't, they didn't do more Beetlejuice at the time than, than what they did. So... Yeah, here we go. Maybe we'll get a new Beetlejuice movie coming at some Beetlejuice, point. Beetlejuice, cool. Beetle, yeah, that'd be Beetlejuice, I'd watch Beetlejuice, that. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. All right. With that being said, we're gonna talk some as a burr, so blur. So blur. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. How we yeah. doing? Everyone alive yeah. out there? Awake out there? Great. Oh, I know we're, we're all dragging oh, ass a little bit today. <laughs> let's let's go. Let's, let's go, baby. All right. Go, so, Kat, so, uh, Kat, so you picked this movie. Probably, I think, for a myriad of reasons. I know, as you as I mentioned before, that you are a fan of this movie, so I do want to hear your thoughts on it first. Um, but I know, Kat, that of the three of us, you are the only one that has been to Le Paris. Yeah. And yes. I know that was quite a while ago. Um, and I know the answer to this, but to the listeners out there, did you go to Les Catacombs so, de Paris? No. We actually, it was, it was funny, that was in my overall thoughts, like notes and stuff. Mm. Um so me and one of my friends, Rick, he, uh, we went to Paris together. Uh, it was like a super spontaneous trip. I had like spring break and we were work together and I was just like, one of us said, we're like, oh, we should go to Paris. Like, and then next week we, by the next week we booked a flight, found a hotel, like figured it all out and we went to Paris and I was like, holy shit, we're going to Paris. That's cool. Whatever. We had a, we had a blast. Um, I definitely think that the French hate Americans after going there. No surprise there. Um, yep. Absolutely. Uh, but it was a good time. We had a blast. Um, we did try to go to the catacombs. They were under renovations, which was kind of strange. And now, like, looking back, I'm like, well, I think I went right around the time this movie came out. I'm like, maybe it was because of the movie? Maybe. So did it, they film maybe. it in the catacombs? They actually did. So, yeah, this is, this is an, I'll, I'll get into more of this later, but it is the first film to ever get approval to actually be filmed in the catacombs. Yeah. And the entire movie was filmed in France, in Paris, and in the catacombs. Yeah, I kind of want to go pretty back cool. and, That's and pretty cool. see if that like lines up time-wise with that. So if this that movie actually... was released in 2014, which means they would have been shooting it in like 2012, 2013. That's when I went. Yeah, so they're probably filming it right around the time that you were there. Dude, you could have been an extra. I know, right? Yeah, I think Could have so. been in that French nightclub where they go to re recruit Le Papillon. We, didn't, we did Le go to Papillon. bars, but we did not go to the French night, nightclubs. Okay. No, actually, no. I must have been younger than that. No, I was. it was before It was before that. Mm. So it probably wasn't. But it's so, weird. Yeah, that Paris, it's, good time, though? Fun? Yeah, but it's not weird that they were renovating the category. Like, how do they renovate? But then I guess they say in the movie that they, like, you know. They probably have to make sure that, like. Things don't fall collapse. down. Collapse. Like, yeah, the streets don't collapse yeah. into themselves. Yeah, so maybe, yeah. 
Yeah. That would be quite a cataclysm if it did. Oh, yeah. I see what you did there. But it was it was cool, like, watching this movie and knowing that, like, you know, that I was there and stuff. It was, yeah. It was fun. Yeah, yeah that, that would definitely add, like, a layer of, of excitedness for me had I been there. But I just think it's it's just so wild that something like the catacombs exists in the world. Just It, it just goes to show, like, you know, how old part how much older parts of the world other than america are like the fact that that's f- like millions of bodies i think is i don't know exactly well, how that's many like in, buried under the streets that's like in boston Wild. though like when they were like yeah. building the tunnels and the roads they like would dig up like hundreds of bodies when yeah. they were like holy shit from like world yeah. uh, from the civil war yeah crazy stuff yeah but uh that that's one one place i mean i i, I feel like Given my level of claustrophobia, I would have a hard time getting down there. But I'm sure it's pretty cool. I would love to see it. It's it's right up my alley. It's gonna gonna be one of the most macabre, spooky things you could possibly do as a tourist. Oh yeah. In Paris, I feel like it's up there with like you know going to see like the cemetery tours or like haunted tours, or like, like in, in New Seattle, Orleans or something. Or like in the underground uh, city. I went yes. on that tour too. When so I went that to that I know you did not watch the movie um, that or did not join us in the podcast about the movie, but that obviously played a huge part in Malignant. Which oh, yeah. you know, you and I both really enjoyed, Andrew. That was a really good. Um, movie. Yeah, the yeah. underground city tour in Seattle was wild. Yeah, wild. It's cool. I'll bet. Yeah, I'll bet. So yeah, okay. So been to Paris, did not go in the catacombs. Talk to me about As Above, So Below. Why do you like it so much? Why'd you pick it for found footage February? Well, um, I, I know I got two of my movies, Blair Witch and As Above, So Below, for found footage February. I mean, Blair Witch, I feel that like was, was a kind of a unanimous decision. Anyway. So. Yeah, I but mean, sure, we'll, we'll we'll let you say it was I, two of yours. It's funny though. Like I feel like whenever we talk about genres. Genre. Like, um, you know, um, G-anthology and anthology movies and found footage things. Like, I don't always necessarily categorize horror movies. Like, I liked this movie, and I don't, I mean, it's, a, yes, it is categorized as a found footage. But I don't, like, think, like, oh, found footage movies. Like, I'm going to cat. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Anyways, um, I like it. It's a strange, trippy movie kind of thing with, like, the whole, I like the below, like, the whole, the whole concept of as above, so below with... The way that everything kind of flips on its head when they get... Can I t- spoil e- e- every, things? Yes, of course. Like, yeah. <laughs> where like everything is, is a, get... essentially a mirror image of itself. Exactly. It's yeah. a mirror image of itself, except it's like, it's totally different. Yeah. What? And obviously, I mean, the fact that I went to Paris, too, that's that's cool. So I, I there's a million reasons why I like this movie, but um, yeah. Yeah. I did. I like it. Cool. A lot. Okay. A million I like reasons it. and you gave like two. But I, you know, gave like I, I, I like two. A million this. reasons. I don't know. I, I think the whole thing while she's like searching, although I kind of hate her as a character at the same time, she's so annoying. All these protagonists lately, the women protagonists are so annoying that we've like talked about. I thought about. she was hot. Really? Yeah. Ugh, I don't know. I think she's Accents. an idiot. Ugh. She's pretty smart. She's kind of like like Lara Croft a little bit, like Tomb yeah. Raider, like except well, actually Lara Croft was British, so yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. She, All right. Yeah, she's just annoying. Cool. But yeah. Okay, Andrew, your thoughts on As Above So Belir. Kind of reminded me of like a mixture between like the Goonies and the Descent. Yeah. Like, yeah. There, like when they had the funny found yeah, the piano yeah, yeah. down there and the yep. key didn't work. I was yep. like, oh, play the piano and then have this <laughs> to get into the ship. Yeah. Um, I thought it, it's a very good movie, well worth watching. Um, one of the better found footage movies that I've seen, I think. Um, I like the general concept with hell and like going into the catacombs and they just keep going deeper and deeper down and like you have it starts yeah. preying on all your fears all your and your darkest, deepest, darkest yeah. secrets. It's kind of just a cool concept. I really like the creepy cult woman that's just like throughout the movie. Like, you can see her like, yeah. looking. I'm like, this weirdo. Yeah. yeah. And she was like up above too, so that's like makes me wonder. She was above and below. She was both. As worlds. above, so can I talk she about, was below. Can I talk about the ending really quick? Sure. Like the very the, the very last part when they go to the manhole cover. Sure. Spoiler are they, al- spoiler alert. <laughs> are they in? The below now forever, or are they well, back they to where that. they I think were? Back so to reality, that's up for up for interpretation. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. You should have a uh, second one. A second. Where mm. they're just on hell on earth. Hell on earth. Yeah. Below so above as, <laughs> or some Maybe. other variation. Below on so that. above as. The below so above as. Okay. Below so above as. <laughs> or we could do it completely, Avenues. completely reverse. Completely and I'm reverse. not even going to try yeah, saying yeah, I that. Be able to do that <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm a fan of this movie also. I think I'd only seen it one time before re-watching it uh, again. 
I think it is a very interesting concept. It's almost kind of like a cross between like Indiana Jones and the Da Vinci Code mixed with found footage horror, I would say. Um, but I also think that that is also a weakness of this movie because it does sometimes like go a little bit too far up its own ass with like the lore and the fucking artifacts and like it's like Egyptian and then it's like you know Knights Templar yeah. shit. It's all kinds of weird. Like so, I, I feel like don't get too attached to trying to figure out all the mythology behind these artifacts and what exactly there's basically. A stone, a thing, whatever that they're trying to find. The Rosetta that, Stone. Yeah, the, the, the philosopher's stone. I think yeah. it was called. Like, yes. The Rosetta Stone. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. speaking speaking yeah. of that. Yeah. I think she you guys, said that at one point. They mention in the beginning before they even go in the catacombs, Nicholas Flamel. Yeah. I don't know what is that. Do you know Do you know who he is? Nicholas Flamel. Yeah. He's also well. He's like a philosopher, or whatever. He's also in Harry Potter. Oh, yeah? <laughs> because there is a Harry in Potter. In the Sorcerer's and, Stone! Yes yes, 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 yes. Yeah! So wait, wasn't it, one, the book was called The Philosopher's Stone and the movie was called The Sorcerer's Stone and it was yes. changed or some, some yeah. shit like that? Yep. I'm not a big Harry Potter guy. I, never I think so. Been. Well, I, uh, yeah, I read it, but I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Okay. So yeah, I would just say don't pay too much attention to like the mythology and the lore of what it is they're exactly trying to find because it doesn't really make much sense. I mean, you can like read articles about it and shit, but it's kind of it's not intricate accurate. and confusing. Um, I found it confusing to be, you know, a little bit, but, um, and I think this is actually probably the only movie that we've covered this month where there are actually protagonists that survive the events. Stop yeah. taking selfies. Why are you taking selfies? We don't, the, nobody is here in the studio with us to see these photos. I just like to document. The yes. 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 Document. She it's does like talk a, about the Rosetta Stone. Yeah, there's like, there's like a, there's like a, you're doing your own found footage selfie gallery of us doing, uh, doing podcasts. Um, yeah, but I think it's an interesting concept, and I think this is actually probably one of the oh, one of the movies that we've talked about this month that might be a better movie if it hadn't been found footage, and they had you know made a, a an actual movie out of it and explored the concepts a little bit more. Mm. Okay, I don't know, just my. Thought. I think it would have been very good as a non found footage. Movie I would as say well. the uh, at one part when they did a head camera, I was like nauseous. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I was like, this is a little bit too, uh, too much shaky. Too much, too, camera. too shaky, too much yeah. shaky cam. Yeah, too mm-hmm. much shaky camera. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't, it's a good movie. I'm, I don't necessarily think it is a scary movie. Like, it's not a horrifying movie, but I think it has some scary imagery. It's very creepy. Um, and also, probably the most claustrophobic that I, movie that I've ever seen outside of The Descent. Yeah. Oh, well, what's his face? The Descent. Just, like, getting yeah. stuck in the in bones. Oh, in the bones. Yeah. yeah, no. I was like, I would never do All that set. in my life. Yeah. No like, thanks. I, I mean, I just felt bad for what's the um, uh, Scarlet's ex boy George. Scarlet and George, I think, are the two main characters. Like, how many times did George have to say, no, I don't want to go down there. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. He just continues to go along anyway. That's and then he's fault. like, you know, crawling through bones. Yeah, he should have just said, nope. Well, I'm he out. couldn't because the cops were coming, so they had to jump mm. in. And, and he also yeah. clearly still is in love with this girl. Yeah. Right. Um, but I guess, so the actor that plays uh, George, Ben Feldman is his name, and he was in Mad Men. Yes, he yep, was. Uh, for a couple seasons. Oh, that's where I, I was like, oh, I know him from somewhere. I almost got to give the guy some serious credit, um, because he actually, in real life, has severe claustrophobia, and they actually were filming in the catacombs, so he had to, like, take breaks to kind of, like, reset and ground himself to get him to be able to, like, you know... To, to actually like act and film this movie because wow. they were actually in the catacombs doing this, which is just fucking wild to me. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would definitely recommend checking out As Above So Below if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, if you're still listening and you haven't seen it, hopefully we didn't spoil too much of the movie for you. It's still worth. I mean, like I said, if you just want a, a cool found footage experience, definitely check it out. There's some there's some spooky shit in there, and it's worth watching. Yeah. All right. Um, good. Pretty pretty good movie. The. <laughs> Pretty good year for horror movies, 2014, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of which we've covered on the show. Uh, we got Annabelle, which was the prequel to The Conjuring about the Annabelle doll. And then we got three movies that we've covered on this podcast, Ow. including The Babadook. Yeah. Babadook, Duke, Duke. Babadook. Uh, we got Creep. And the episode that we had to record twice. It follows. <laughs> <laughs> those are some good movies. Yeah, some good yeah. movies. Good right? that's, good that's, year, those good are year. those are three three huge movies there. Then what we was got this, 2012? Uh, 2014. 14. 
2014. Uh, also got Oculus, which is a Mike Flanagan movie. We got another paranormal activity movie called Paranormal Activity. I've seen Oculus. The Marked Ones. Yeah, I like yeah, Oculus. I thought because, that was pretty good. That's because we watched Oculus together. So, oh, yes, yeah. we did see that. <laughs> Uh, what else? We got The Purge Anarchy, which again, I've only seen the original Purge, the first Purge, not the movie The First Purge, the original Purge movie. Never seen any of the other ones. Uh, Andrew, Starry Eyes came out in 2014. Another good one. Awesome movie. Yep, very, very good. Um, a not so good movie that's just fucking weird Kevin Smith bullshit. Uh, Tusk came out in 2014. That movie's so weird. It's so fucking It's so stupid. bad, but it's so good at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's kind of just, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And we also got, oh man, another, another classic, which actually, hot take, the TV show is better than the movie ever was at this point now. Uh, and that is What We Do in the Shadows. The yeah. original movie came out in 2014 as well. And uh, also, I, I did see, so, uh, season four of What We Do in the Shadows has already been shot, and it's oh, going to be released nice. in the next few months, so awesome. they move quickly on that show. I love it. There's, like, no waiting at all. It's great. Oh, yeah, we already talked about you catching up on What We Do in the Shadows and watching that show, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've already caught up, mostly. I'm on season three. Yeah, there's only three seasons, so, all right. Otis, what about you? When does the new season come out? Uh, a couple <laughs> months from now. A couple months from now. Otis, what did you think about uh, As Above, So Below? Any thoughts? He no. seems extremely he's no, no Yeah, he's just he's uh, the official hound dog of America's hometown horror, just, just hound dogging on the floor over here. He ain't nothing but a long hound day of dog. sleeping and laying on the but couch and no barking hound. at cars passing by. All right. So, anyone know where the term as above, so below comes from? I have it in front of me, but is anyone familiar with that? Uh, the, the Bible? No. No? The title of the film comes from Masonic Teachings and Lore. Uh, which in turn is based heavily on Christian language and belief. So actually, maybe it is in the Bible at some well, point, but it's Christian That's language. Okay. Uh, specifically being transcribed as part of the quote-unquote Lord's Prayer, in which the phrase, on earth as it is in heaven, refers to God's will being carried out both in heaven and and on earth as he sees fit. So there is a variation of it in the Bible. I was going to say, I feel like that sounds like it's from mm. the Bible. <laughs> yep, yep. On earth as it is in heaven. So, you know, a very similar phrase. Uh, also is on, uh, it's in the second verse of the Emerald Tablet. Saw that? Don't know what that is. See, this is the type of shit, like, I'm not good with this type of ancient religious history stuff. It's uh, like, kind of like Greek tablet. to me. I don't know what the yeah. Emerald Tablet is. Yep. And then... Uh, tablet. <laughs> already mentioned this, but this was the first ever production that secured permission from the French government to film in the catacombs, which is wild to me that it took until 2014 for them to give you permission for a movie to be filmed down there. I know, I'm just repeating myself and saying that it is, it is just crazy. So, uh, with that being said, obviously they had to like lug all their equipment down there, all the actors are down there, so there were very little use of props, and the actors had to use the environment around them to, to act. Uh, production in the actual catacombs was difficult for the cast, and especially the crew, as there were no uh, no electricity, no cell phone service, and the tunnels are centuries old. So yeah, there's uh, How'd nothing they get the piano down there. Down there? Um, That's probably a separate. What about the car? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I didn't find anything. Was there, the I'm sure there were certain scenes that they didn't film in the catacombs. I would think so. You like, can't have a car. They there. look like big warehouse scenes where they have yeah. like, huge openings. On I'm the sure they had images. certain scenes that they built. Yeah. They might, they may have. Logistically, that just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. And they wouldn't be like, yeah, bring a car down here, sure. Yeah. I yeah. mean, maybe that some of those dark tunnels were in the catacombs. It could have been like in what we do in the shadows where they like build the car inside the. Yeah. The <laughs> yep. There you go. There's <laughs> a big exactly. red button yep. right here. Yep. It's open. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, watching this movie, pretty obvious that this is kind of a, a modern day retelling or like a, a metaphor for descent into hell. Mm-hmm. Right? Correct. Did you guys, did yes. you guys pick up on this at all uh, a little yes. bit? I'm sure you, I, you I probably did. I picked it up yep. they were putting down. Okay. So wh- how, what would you what would you say what do you guys think about that? Oh, I, I like that concept. I, yeah. yeah. I like anything to do with hell and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so specifically <laughs> I found I found something on here that basically that says this is kind of like a modern a modernization of Dante's Inferno. Gotcha. Where there are nine the, the, the characters descend into hell and there are nine levels of hell. Okay. Uh, seven of which are the deadly sins, but so let's see the nine levels the nine circles of hell are limbo, lust, gluttony, greed, wrath, heresy, violence, fraud, and treachery. So some of the deadly sins are in there, but other things as well. 
So basically, the, the too long, didn't read version of this analysis pretty much is this. So the characters in the movie share mini set, mini set, if I could only fucking talk. It's been a long day, folks. The characters in this movie share many similarities with Dante Alighieri's Inferno. Both enter into hell, both traverse the nine circles of hell, both see sinners punished according to their sins, both escape hell through a portal where gravity is reversed, and in some instances the dialogue of the group is the same of Dante's guide, Virgil. 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 <laughs> Not the owl from Mighty Max, but Virgil from Dante's Inferno. Ah. Correct. Well, they, they talk about that in the movie, too. They're like, Virgil, this, that, and whatever. When she's trying to think, when she's trying to save him, when he's, like, down on the thing. Yeah. With his neck bleeding. Yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, I have to put the stone back to save him or whatever. And Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, again, the lore kind of lost me, but if you take the movie as for what it is, and it, it's a pretty cool experience like, just to watch. I like the puzzle kind of things that she puts together. Like, actually, well, the one thing that I was just like, no way, is, like, when she's, like, seeing which rock to take from, like, the whole, like, wall, and she's like, how many planets were there? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be this rock. And she's like, okay, we're either going to die right now, mm. or it, something's going to open. And then something opens, and it's just this, like, hole to crawl through. And I'd be like, dude, I'm yeah. not going in there. Like, <laughs> forced to enter hell, crawling on their bellies. Yeah. <laughs> Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Yeah. Mm. So... I like the little puzzle aspect of everything. Like, that kind of... It has a nice layer to the movie. Yeah. Mm, the puzzles. But even, like, when they have that, that... The hole in the ground that they have to, like, smash, and then the water... Like, there's a water, and then yeah. they smash yeah. that, and then all of a sudden there's just, like, nothing. Mm-hmm. I would not... Like, there was so many... I wouldn't have so done many, any of the things I would have done. <laughs> I, would have just, <laughs> I would have done zero. I would have went to the corner and cried. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. waited to start. Like, ah, yeah. where did yeah. it come? Yeah. 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 I would have... Jumped through this hole. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah Fuck that. Let's yeah. dig through bones. Like, nope, no, none of it. Nope. I wouldn't have even gone down there. No yeah. way. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yep. What did you guys think of the way that the characters were killed in accordance with their sins? I thought they did a pretty good job with that. I thought it was good. I was. Fine I know. With it. it's, a, it's a little ambiguous for some yeah. of them. Yeah. I mean, it was. Um, yeah. So, like, what about the uh, French guy with the car that's Papillon. burning? Papillon. And he kind of gets sucked into it, and yeah. then all of a sudden everything gets, yep. like, sucked into the ground, and, and then, then all his feet. sticking out. Yeah. yeah. That was a little weird. Yep. I liked it, but I was, like, I didn't understand it. But I was okay that I didn't understand it, because I was, like, that's okay. Uh, his name was... I'll, I'll find it. Keep talking. So he died by what? He, like, he, fell down the hole. He fell so down the hole. He yes, was, yes, yes. He was... Um, at the top of the hole, yeah. and then someone he heard someone. Benji, Benji, Benji. Um, he heard someone and was like, "Is anyone there? Is anyone there?" And all of a sudden, you saw that like creepy lady, whatever, yeah. with like her son, like just pop out of so nowhere. So, what was his sin? Lust or something? Like, what was? What did he? Do? That wasn't. Really was he yeah, lusting? Was, yeah, was he lusting for her at some point? But I don't feel like he may was. have been. I don't may know. Have been. It just seemed like he didn't do anything wrong. Well, that's why I don't think that all this necessarily coordinates. Like, it, it definitely coordinates with people's past. They didn't but get I into his think, past. No, they didn't. It's almost like he was just fodder. Yeah. Uh, so here's here's what I was able to find. And it, again, some of this is meant to be, uh, you know, ambiguous. But here we go. So okay. So the French guy got killed in the crowds. Papillon. Papillon. Mm -hmm. Papillon. Uh, let's see. So this occurs in the treachery circle of hell. So all right. Let's see. Uh, second cavern of uh, of the betrayal of community ties in which uh, Papillon is killed by the manifestation of a man he left for dead in a vehicular fire. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Pretty cut and dry. Yep. Pretty much. That yep. one was obvious. Yep. And then let's see what it says about Benji here. If anything, feet, I can't though. really find anything. <laughs> well, that's just to add dramatic effect. Yeah, I don't think that has And it wasn't even like it was bare feet. It wasn't even like, yeah, like his, was it his off. feet? That actually had meaning if I remember correctly. The feet um, did? I will find it. Yeah, like getting set getting set in stone like that. Uh, that actually had meaning if I remember correctly, but oh. it was like a lot a lot to like take in. So keep talking. I'll, I'll find it. Keep talking. Um, and then there was the girl with her dad or something? Yeah, Scarlett, who's dead. Yeah, her dad hung himself, and she didn't answer his phone call yep. before he killed himself. But she right. didn't end up dying, so right. she didn't really. And then George uh, his brother drowned, Drown. waiting yeah. for him to go get help. Uh, what about the who was the other girl? Uh, I forget her. Susie. Oh, Susie. She died real quick. Yeah. Sue's? Sue's the first Sue's. one. Sue's. <laughs> I'm not a Sue's. Well, she had like you know the compound fracture in that other yeah. place, and then all of a sudden she waved a stone over it, and she was healed. But then immediately when they go to the below 
she just gets her head smashed yeah. by like the first. Person oh yeah, that what's just his name? The guy oh, that they uh, the left. Mole. The guy we'll that they left to die. Oh, we'll talk. Yeah. We never yeah, went yeah, looking yeah, for him. Yeah. Yeah. We never went looking for him. All right, so here, here is the... the yeah, that was gruesome. That was probably yeah. the best stuff. Here's the description according to IMDb of everything here. So the entire group ends up in hell for committing sins they refuse to acknowledge. Scarlett's father called uh, her before he committed suicide, but she ignored his call. George left his brother Danny to get help when he was stuck, and Danny winds up drowning. Papillon set a car on fire with a guy in it. Zed fathered a child and then denied him. While Benji and Susie's backgrounds are not known, as, it is believed that Benji might have hurt his girlfriend and child, and Susie might have committed violence against someone, possibly Latoupe, and his spirit directly contributed to her death. Papillon, Benji, and Susie were punished accordingly, while Scarlet, George, and Zed were spared because they admitted their sins, repented for them, and then took a leap of faith. And also, ah. Scarlet's sin wasn't, uh, she didn't answer her phone. Like, right. It's not a sin. No. Yeah, it's a little, unless there was an a little, unless, a there, unless there was yeah. an ulterior motive as to why she did not answer. The phone I'm sure she didn't know that. It, that's yeah, I, right. I, I, she's that's, not like I'm not gonna answer this phone because really I know my dad's gonna. Yeah. Seems suicide. pretty petty. I wouldn't consider that to be a like, sin. If, that, if that's personally. gonna put you in hell, then fucking. Then, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm already going there anyway. <laughs> right? yeah. like, that's like he lists off all the, the deadly sins. I'm like done one, done, done that, done that. Yeah. Like how many do I have left? Like let's go. It's like one of those. It's like those lists on Facebook. It's like which have you tried all of them? All right, what else we got on As Above, So Below, guys? Any thoughts? Anything else? I thought that it was interesting that no one died until they went into the below. No one died. Like, well, yeah. they, went, they went the whole, more than half well, of the Well, because they were paying for their sins in hell. But yeah, I think that I, maybe that was a good part of, like, the buildup of the movie was that, Yeah, like, it was a while before someone died. Yeah, like, a long time. No one died. And all of a sudden, like, so the girl broke her arm, and then immediately her head gets smashed, and then everyone starts yeah. dropping like flies. But, I mean... She yeah. got her head pummeled. That was pretty good. I yeah, I feel like I feel like the majority of this movie is, like, treasure treasure hunting shit. And then the yeah. last, like, half hour of it is, like... A haunted house almost. Yeah, full-blown full like, ball-to-the-wall horror stuff. Yeah. It's, very so it's, interesting. I, th- I thought it was a good concept. Yeah, it was a cool concept. General. Very different. Very different. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to find a movie that you would like compare it to. I would say so. Yeah, yeah that's I a don't good, know that's a good way of putting it. it. To. What about even the, in the beginning with her? With um, I forget where she was in. Was she in Egypt? I, I ran. Or, I ran. Okay, and then she finds the. Uh, I forget the name of it already, but that like bullhorn thing, and then yeah. she's like scanning it all over. Being oh, like, that oh, looked my like God. one of the false like gods that they had built, like. Bow, bow. Starts with a B. Yeah. I don't know. Like, they worshipped. Oh, no, but those were made of gold and silver. The ones with, like, for Sodom and Gomorrah, I think it was. Yeah. When they started, like, when God came in his wrath. He's like, you're worshipping false idols or some yeah. shit. As annoying as she was, she did some pretty cool stuff when uh, she, I think like, she was that annoying. She just was a way too ambitious. Yeah. Like, just getting everybody in trouble. Yeah. But they all went on their own accord, so it's on them. Right. I liked, and I liked when they were in the museum and she, like, put lime on the thing. And oh, then and put, the like, ammonia, the fire and on and it was, like... Fire and and the guy's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty cool. I'm like, yeah, that, that's actually pretty cool. But there's no way that, like, oh, my God, when I went in, when I was over in Paris, if you went near anything. Yeah, like, they would never have been able to They would have though. never been able to do that in a museum. No Absolutely way. not. No fucking way. No. Well, because movie. So dis- suspend disbelief for a little bit and, then, yeah. you know, What about allow. you, Michael? What are your thoughts? Um, no, I, 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 I think I've kind of given my thoughts. I don't know if I really have a lot much else to say about this movie. I feel like I, I like it. It's definitely... A good viewing. It's not one of my all-time favorites, but I think it's a very good Just found a footage weird, movie. It's a trippy, weird, yeah. Like the scares are different. It's it's inventive, which I like, and I feel like there's not like it, this movie kind of got panned by critics. It wasn't very popular, but I mean, most horror movies, uh, most horror movies are. I feel like aren't. I mean, maybe not so much nowadays. Let's see. A film uh, received generally negative reviews from critics. Grossed forty one million dollars against a five million dollar budget, so I mean, not a total bomb. No, um, it didn't do that great either. But no, but I feel like this has kind of gone on to become almost like a cult classic. Yeah, you know, uh, what is it? Eight years later now at this yeah. point. This is definitely one of those movies that I feel like if you're a horror fan, you've heard of and you've probably seen and enjoy. It's not one that your average casual horror fan will have heard of. No, it's a, not a deep dive either. But it's no. yeah. it's not a deep. I mean, it's maybe it's a kind of a deep dive. I don't know. I don't so know. what people watch. I feel like, because I've seen it, it's not a deep dive, because I don't really see too many deep dive movies. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's certain movies that you see, though, that you 
have a reason for watching them. Yeah. Like this one probably was like you're like oh Paris. I've seen well, I and I've Paris. seen that year. I think I've seen almost all of those yeah. movies. So I think it was just one of those years that I was just constantly going to the movie theater and seeing all of these movies. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Did I see these movies? And well, Babadook, I didn't see in theaters. I think I definitely did. Which uh, was I did not see Babadook. We did not. I think was we watched it in the films. I thought we did. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. Babadook, maybe. I feel like it wasn't released on a wide scale, so it would have been tough for us to see in uh, theaters. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. An Australian yeah. film. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I didn't know if that was available in theaters. That's true. I don't know. No say, I say. The world may never know. Dientes. <laughs> Diente, dente. All right. Any final thoughts on As a Berve, Sir Belair? Yeah. I liked it. I'd watch it again. You've made that quite clear. Repent for your sins and you will Repent for your sins. Situation. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good message. Repent for your sins, admit your sins, and take a leap of faith, folks. And then you can, and basically you can commit as many sins as you want, but as long as you repent for them. Yes. And maybe you'll good. end up on the other side of a manhole cover upside down and mm. come out of life okay. Yes. Did they, did they get out of there with any treasure at all, or no? No, yeah. not even the stone. Yeah. She put the stone back, dude. She for I mean, for it. how long it took them to get from the above to the below, and then where he like got his neck chomped off, for her to get all the way back there so fast. Yeah, no and way. And back. Yeah, yeah that was, was like, like wild. And for him to still be alive when he's bleeding out of his neck. Like, oh no, he was dead. She, she brought him back him to back life. From the oh. dead. Yeah, he was dead. I he was like he was like barely. He was, he was like bleeding. Lazarus. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he he would did. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. He did, and she brought him back to life. So, yeah, yeah good job, Scarlet. <laughs> She's a hero. MVP. Cool. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, and I probably mean, the and probably in the as above, so below universe, Scarlet and George went on to live happily ever after, and are off, you know, gallivanting and trying to search for treasure. <laughs> and that other that other camera guy went through years of therapy and will never recover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Who just like walked yeah. off into the distance and was just Zed, like, yeah, yeah. Like, see you Bye. guys, yeah. I hate you. He was like, like everybody, uh, all my friends are dead. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All my friends are dead. All right. Well, I think it's going to do it for another episode of America's Hometown Horror. That's going to close out Found Footage February, folks. Oh, do you know what? For American Hometown fact. What? Tomorrow you have to start paying for parking. America's Hometown. America. You said American Hometown. Oh, Amer- America's We live hometown. in America's Hometown. Yes. You have to start paying for parking tomorrow. Yes. March 1st. Awful. Yikes. How, how terrible. Yikes. Terrible. 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 Well, winter was fun. Free parking. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was worth it for the free parking. <laughs> yeah, free I'd rather, I'd rather pay for parking year round. And yeah, me too. Warm out. Yeah. Would you? Okay, whatever. All right. Well, uh, gotta figure out what we, do, we want to do for March here. We'll figure it out. But March we'll, Madness, uh, baby. We'll, we'll be back with some more content. Hope everyone enjoyed Found Footage February. If you did enjoy and you want some more of what we have to say uh, on the interwebs, you can find us. In the following places, on our website, which is apod.com, A-H-H-P-O-D.com, or on YouTube and Facebook, to search for America's Hometown Horror, and you will find us. You can also tweet at us at Hometown Horror, and you can find us on Instagram at Hometown Horror Pod. Shit. You can even email us at Hometown Horror Podcast at gmail.com, and you can find our show wherever you're listening right now, and pretty much anywhere else you get your podcasts. So how about that? How about that? My name's Mike. I've been your host tonight. Thanks for checking in, and I've been joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Andrew and Kat. Say good evening to your listeners, folks, before we all go off to Betty Bye for the evening. See Adios. you next month. Yes, good evening. Adios, muchachos. And enjoy the Batman. The Batman. The man yes. of the bats. I'm vengeance. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Mike from America's Hometown Horror and just wanted to say thank you again for listening to another episode of our show because of course we would be nothing without you listeners. If you are interested in more local Plymouth podcasts, I would highly recommend you check out uh, some shows by our cohorts on the Inebriart Podcast Network. That's right, the Inebriart Podcast Network, folks. In addition to America's Hometown Horror, you can find the Inebriart Podcast, Bar Talk, Theme Park Legends, Retro Redoctopus and Old Colony Cast, head on over and give them a listen.